Hi there, and welcome to this tutorial for Fastlane Digital Audio School down in Montpellier, an Ableton Certified Training Center. In this series of tutorials, we're learning how to use the Max for Live devices, and we think they may well change your workflow forever. So we've already looked at LFO, Envelope, Shaper, Drum Synths, Expression Control, we looked at the Envelope Follower in the last video, and the last one, but not least, the Note Echo, a MIDI delay that will enable you to pitch the repetitions. Let's have a look at that now. So to understand Not Echo, to explore its potential, let's use the same musical example we've been building together since the start of this series of tutorials on Max for Live. We have a drum beat here that was built with the DS synthesizers. We have expression control, adding subtle movements to the hi-hats, but also modulating one parameter in the synthesizer, the DE tune. This analog synth is heavily modulated using envelope, LFO and shaper, and we also built in the last tutorial a bass line that is modulated this time in the frequency using this sound and we used envelope follower to achieve that so note echo is like a delay so it will repeat a sound a number of times at a certain rate to demonstrate that I'm gonna create a very short stabby sound all right so let's do that over C3 for example let's add a sound here let's go and build a texture using um, operator there we go let's load it here so let's hear that for now yeah it's not very loud let's do that let's add more harmonics and slightly brighter sound yeah it's not bad even brighter would be nice I'm gonna bring the transpose up yeah, that's better, that's bright enough. Let's add a bit of movement in the pitch. Bit of reverb. Yeah, it's a bit, it's a bit long. I'm going to shorten that here. A bit more. Yeah, that's perfect. That will cut through the mix nicely. Yeah, we can all hear that now. Great. So, let's go and fetch note echo you'll find it under the media effects in your max for life tab um there it is the old one was blue the new one is yellow and the new one is slightly easier to use i believe it looks like a delay look if i go and fetch just to show you a fetch a simple delay look at that they're, they're very much the same aren't they so we can do well a delay it's a midi delay as any delay, we can set the uh, speed, the rate of the repetition here. We have uh, repetition every bar here, um, every other beat, so um, uh, half a bar here, every beat, and here quavers and the semi-quavers. Let's hear it. Yeah, so there's a lot of repetition. Um, um, actually, um, it, you, you can't fade the repetition like you would with a, a classic delay. You see the repetitions here are going to be constant in terms of volume. Yeah, listen. Yeah. And the feedback will set the length of the repetition, how, how many times it repeats. So I'm going to bring that down. I just want one repetition, like so. Yeah, yeah, just the initial sound plus the new one as two sounds. If I now go to quavers, yeah, or even uh, triplets, uh, pretty much like that. Yeah, great. So nothing new there. You you could say, well, well what would you use that, Freddy? Because it's pretty much the same as a normal uh, delay. Yeah, you can obviously swing the repetition using the uh, sync here. And the new uh, feature and what's really important about this object is the pitch here. If I bring the pitch up, listen to what happens. Yeah, the repetition is actually pitched, and that, that's quite amazing. Yeah. So what we can do here is duplicate, for example, this uh, note echo. Add another one with a different value. Yeah, so we can have uh, more intricate rhythms. We can actually group into a rack these note echo and add another one underneath to get a parallel system. So this uh, new chain here will receive the original sound, the one that's um, actually triggered inside the clip. I can mute the original and only hear the repetition. That's quite interesting. Listen. Yeah, so we get more and more complex rhythms. Let's just pitch that new one. And we can create melodic, rhythmic phrases. And what we can also do is, if you know the scale of your track, you can actually play scale behind all of that. And the notes generated by these 
effects are now constrained into our scale. So that's great, yeah? You can do so much with that. Let's uh, move this uh, slightly later here, for example. Oh, a bit too late. Let's bring it. Yeah, I quite like that. Yeah, for example, that's just one of the numerous examples of what you could do with this object. I quite like using this with vocals, but um, yeah, this this scratch sound may well do the trick for me. So I'm just gonna go in there and cut a little piece of that scratch here. Let's um, do that here, right? And instead of operator here, I'm gonna go and bring my simpler. There we go. And load that audio file into the sampler. Like so. There we go. So let's hear the result. Yeah, we can, can pitch that as well. Yeah, you can hear the movement there. Yeah, so anything is possible, really. One thing you need to be aware of is that if you're using a drum rack, for example, let's, let's just do that just to show you what I mean. If you're using a drum rack here, yeah, and you have, I don't know, one sound in there. Let's just bring a sound in there. Yeah, oh, let's bring three sounds up. Oh, there you go. So now, um, no, I didn't place that on the right um, notes. Here we go. That's better. Yeah, cool. Now, what happens here is that um, drum rack is not chromatic. So each sound can only be triggered with one MIDI note. So if I um, bring up the pitch with the MIDI delay, well, I'm going to start hitting empty pads. Look. Well, first of all, it's not the right note, so that's not going to help, is it? Let's bring that to C1, yeah? Oh, let's just bring that two, two octaves down. Uh, it's not letting me do that because I'm on a drum rack. Well, let's do, let's do it on this one. That's fine. Sounds a bit loud, sorry. Okay, so for st some reason it's not doing what I want it to do. Let's try that. See, yes, it. As I pitched up four semitones, the second note triggered was D sharp, and yeah, there's no sound there. So I'm not saying you can't do that. I'm just saying that the uh, the results are going to be very different since you know drum rack is not chromatic; it's, it's just one note only per sound. So it doesn't work the same way. You may get some amazing results if you fill that rack with different sounds that would be basically triggered using this note echo. So that's it. That was the final tutorials of this series of tutorials. I hope you enjoyed exploring these tools. I have to sincerely, I have to say that they've tremendously changed my workflow and I insist uh, with the students here at Fastlane that uh, they, they should really strongly look into these tools for their production as it will probably revolutionize the sound and the way we make music. These interactions, these multiple uh, assignments and interactions we can do with the Max for Life tools create a microcosm of sound that breathes. It's an organic sort of uh, uh, environment that we create here. Uh, and changing a parameter on one sound uh, may affect uh, the texture, the rhythm of other sounds. And, and that creates a strong, strong uh, binding agent between the, our sounds in a track. So I hope you've enjoyed this series of tutorials for Fastlane. See you again soon. Bye.